Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we are with a new chapter in which we will be developing this cobblestone floor material that we started on the Discord FMA free class. Now, as you can see here, this material is not finished. We will be finishing this in the next weeks as we move forward in this new series that we have just created. Now, in this chapter, we are going to go to look over the creation of the stone itself. Later, we will break up how we create the concrete that is holding the stones and finally the base color and roughness. Eventually, we will also create an extra chapter where we will be going over the reference we gather and how to learn from the reference what to do in the details. So let's jump to it. So first, we need to go over how to create our stones. So I'm going to change this to a plane first so you can all see this better. Yes, so we can see the stone pattern right here and all the details they have. So let's go first with the most basic of it, the stones. So for the stones, we directly did something we already have done in other chapters. Yes, and we create our own salt pattern that we, after that, changed into an edge detect. Yes, but let's go over it again just for the sake of it. We started with a tile generator, yes, that has different circles with different shapes, different scales, different air intersizes and as well different rotation. But the most important part is the size and uniform grayscale value they have. This is very important for the usage of the distance nodes who create our shapes. So remember, the distance nodes reach each shape of our map, yes, and based in their uniform grayscale color, it will span them until they reach or touch other shape. So, let's see, I'm gonna lower this, yes, and you can see. So the important part of actually having a, uni a different uniform color for our shapes is exactly for the use of the distance. So when we start increasing the maximum distance, you see that these shapes start to increase as well. Now, the reason why these shapes are not being affected is because they are below the value the distance node can read. So let's say we come here and change this, lower a little bit more, the shapes will start to change as you can see here our material as well yes so that's how we are going to create our stones on the first place we need to create our own cells map so that we can later yes use it for more stone variation now after we have created our cells map we are just going to do some warping with a cloud stew and a purling noise to get some variation in these edges we have this warping that is going to be affected and translated to our shapes later. Now, as you can see, the edge detect node is allowing us to give us this really nice corner shape. Yes, that would be different if we plug in without them. As you can see here, this might still work, but that's because of the next step, the non-uniform blur. So you can see right here the direct comparison between the non-uniform blur and the blur. Yes. In this case, the blur is kind of messing up with our map. So instead of doing this, yes, what we do is we use the non-uniform blur that is taking its own shape into the blur map to generate this kind of circle uh, surface that we have on our stones. Now, moving on, we will need a levels to correct this shape because if we have this right now here, it just looks bad. Yes, it looks too soft and not like what we want to have. Yes, so by using the levels, we can control this further and make the right shape we want to achieve. Now, let's go for the details. In this case, we are not going to play around with the edges of the stones, as these stones are quite rounded and they are not having any kind of edge damage, or at least we haven't added yet. So, the first step would be to actually add some detail to it, and for that, we choose blue noise fast that was then blurred to make this kind of noise that we can add to our material, yes, and create some surface detail. Now, check this, we're using a really low value because we want this to affect our stones, but we don't want to affect it so much. Yes, this is the actual definition of a detail. It's something that is, is, is there, but it's not overall the composition of our material. Now, following up, we just started to add more noises using different masks, yes. So in the first place, we use a moisture noise, yes, with a copy, using the base shape of our stones multiplied by a specific mask. You're going to see this kind of mask quite a lot during my materials, and that's because they provide with a really soft 
gradient. Yes, as you can see, this is actually quite soft and blurred. That allows for a soft gradient between one detail and another detail without having to break up the overall material. Next detail is the porous porosity of the zone. Now, we divided this into two to three layers. Now, the first layer was made with a third one. So we don't want all of these uh, circles to be on our zone. So we use a histogram scan to choose exactly which ones we wanted to use. Now, as the result was too sharp, as you can see here, we blur it and then use the levels to correct this. Once again, we're using a mask for this, but in this case, we're using the flood filter random grayscale with a histogram scan to select the amount of stones we want this detail to be applied to. As you can see here, we are using a value 0 0.8. So let's make a small correction in this. So you can choose a value between 0 and 1. So if I pull this to 1, I'm choosing the 100% of my stones. If I pull this to 0, I'm choosing none of my stones. This means that 1 is 100%, 0 0.5 then is 50%. By using a 0.8 value, this means I'm using an 80% of all my stones with this detail. Now, moving forward. Here, we just made a small trick. So we use the black and white spots too, as we have used it in other tutorials. We use the high pass grayscale to remove the background, yes, and leave less contrast. So then with the levels, we can pull this up and form these circles you can see here. With an invert, we take these circles, we blur them a little bit, and again, we subtract them to our old material as you can see on the screen right now. Again, we are using really low values because we don't want this to be so extreme. The same mask is being applied. We are using exactly the same histogram scan as before, but multiplied by a Gaussian noise to soften the, uh, the effect of these stones. Now, before moving forward to more holes in our stones, we wanted to add some variation to them as well. So we use a clause 2 with a multiple directional warp to generate some details that are being copied over our stones to generate some variation. You can see it in this particular stone here. If I see the result of this, you can see that there's some height information that is changing. So we are actually given variation to our material. It is not being really affected right now because we choose a certain amount of stones and as well we multiply this with a parallel noise. Now in here there's a small secret. So I'm using two multi-directional warp grayscales node here, yes, that have two different intensities. The first one has intensity of 45 and the other one has an intensity of 26. That's because I want to blend these two intensities so there is a variation between something really strong and something really low. Yes, and again, we are using a Gaussian noise with a copy in the blend node. So a result of this would be more soft, and like this, it will have a combination of more strong details. Now moving up, we have to make some of the details you can see around here. Yes, moving forward, we have to create some surface details that are usually present in these rocks, like this kind of chipping that you can see here. If I increase this, you're gonna be able to see it even more. Now, this chipping was supposed to be really soft. That's why the value, again, it's really low, but we had to make it in a very specific way. So we use a cloud too, and we really tile it a lot in this case. We use a value of seven. Then we use a slow blur with a really low value in the max mode. We're using the max mode because the max mode is pulling all the shapes out. If I were to use the mean node, this would generate another detail that's not what we're looking for, as you can see here. Yes, so we're gonna keep this at max mode. Now, for the blend node, what we are using is a mean darken because we wanted to apply this in specific cases and scenarios. Now, for the mask, again, we're just using a parallel noise that can be actually changed with a random seed to change the position and intensity of each detail you can see here. Now, following up, yes, there's something that we were missing by this moment. Now, not all the stones were as destroyed and broken as this one, so we have to make or add some variation to this. Some stones, like for example, these ones, are a little bit more soft and not that destroyed or affected by these details. So what we did is we split this part with the beginning stones, yes, that I'm gonna show you here, from the beginning, using another mask from a histogram scan to choose which stones we wanted to be affected by the already applied details and which ones are not. So after that, we just went on and add extra details. 
Once again, we use the black and white spots too with a random seed, high pass grayscale to remove the contrast, and the levels to get all of these dots. And these dots again are being applied everywhere, in this case with no mask. That's because overall, despite some zones having some details and other zones don't have it, this kind of detail was present in every single zone in our reference. Now, moving forward, there's, there was something else that we had to take care of, and those were these big holes. Now, these big holes, again, were really present on our material, but we didn't want to make something so procedural in this case. So what we did was we created a tile generator with circles all around, and we used different directional warps and a warp to create variation in our, in our dots. As you can see here, we go from this, to this, to finally this. Now, the strong point of this is that we use a vector warp grayscale. This is allowing us to warp the position of our dots, yes, based in the position of our stones. For that, we created a flood field to random color from our original flood field to make this possible. Without it, it would look like this, and with this, it just looks like this. And just for you to see the actual comparison, I'm gonna create a blend node here. Yes, to which I'm going to input the stones. I'm going to change this to subtract and I'm going to let you see how it looks without the vector warp grayscale and how it looks when I apply it. So as you can see now, it's following the actual shape of the stones. After that, we just use a non-uniform blur to create a small kind of dent in our circles and we subtract it to our stones. Once again, we use a history scan to choose exactly in which stones we want this to appear. Now, as you can see, this is not finished. The material has a lot to change, as for example, the pattern. You can see there are some really small pebbles that shouldn't be there that we are going to change in the future. Yet, there's just one more detail that I would like you to include in your materials nowadays. This is a grand generator for scratches, but this one is not going to be found inside Substance Designer. This grunge is from Substance Painter. So basically what you can do is you can go to Substance Painter, look for the grunge you want to use, right click on it and, and press show in Explorer. This will allow you to get that file and input it here in Substance Designer to use it. For this case, we're using it to create scratches with the right shape and intensity that we want. In this case, we are lowering the intensity in the blend node and using again the trick of a soft, ma soft mask to generate the detail and variation in the intensity of these rocks. As you can see, the first step was quite simple. We just made these really good looking stones in almost no time, but there's a secret behind it, and let me show you. The secret behind this is that we are being really careful with every detail we add. We read the details from our reference images, and we translate that into Substance Designer. Now, the trick in this is on two things. First, the intensity we use, second, the mask we use. You, if you have realized by now, you can see that every single blend node has a mask. This allows us to control the details and to make details actual details. If I were to remove the mask, what would happen is that all the stones will have exactly the same details. So no stone would be particular or special, but all the stones would be equal, which is actually non natural in our world. So in order to do that, we have to mask our blend nodes to generate new details, as you can see here, that we are moving forward. And in fact, if you want to see an end result of this to help yourselves, you can just create a normal map, my bad, created in the wrong place, and see how is that affecting your actual height map, as you can see here. So every time you add a detail, you can use this normal node that you have created to see how these details are being affected to your rocks. Sometimes it's hard to translate the information from a height map that you are building to the 3D world. So using a normal node is going to allow you to see this more clearly. Now, I hope this video was useful for you. And during this week, I will launch the second part where we'll be looking at how to create the concrete that is behind these stones and it's supporting the whole structure. See you in the next chapter.